uh, Muslim injustices and depredations that they've seen over the years. And for example, coming from my state of Kerala, Islam came peacefully in the lifetime of the Prophet through traders and, and travelers who had been trading and traveling for a thousand years before the Prophet Muhammad was born. And so when the new news came from there, it actually interested people. One of the Kerala kings, Jeremiah Perumal, actually said, this sounds interesting, I want to go meet this guy. So he actually got on a ship and sailed off to the Arabian Peninsula with his, with his uh, retinue in order to meet the Prophet. He actually did. He didn't, in fact, survive to come back. But the evidence of his visit still stands in the shape of coconut trees from Kerala growing on the Oman Peninsula. It's not native to that peninsula. So that's the kind of history we have, uh, by and large, in the South. Um, a Tamil Muslim uh, and a Tamil Christian would feel they're far more in common with a Tamil Hindu than with um, uh, than a Tamil Hindu would with, let's say, uh, 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 a Hindu from the North, necessarily, because of cultural issues, historical experiences, language, cuisine, dress, and so on. Now, in India, up to now, we have celebrated these differences. We've said, this is great, this is what we're all about. Let's enjoy the fact that we manage diversity so much better than other countries that are not even as diverse as we are. But today, for the first time, there are social divisions being promoted by the government. And those social divisions are going to unfortunately have a political connotation when a constitutional amendment that freezes political representation at the level of the 1971 census expires in 2026. Ironically, this amendment brought in by Mrs. Gandhi, Indira Gandhi, was renewed by Mr. Vajpayee's government without debate unanimously in the parliament for another 25 years. So it will be 50 years. But why did Mrs. Gandhi bring this in? Her principal motive was actually that she didn't want to reward those states that were failing to control their populations. So that was her motive. But why Mr. Vajpayee renewed it was for national unity. He knew that having a coalition government in the north and some southern partners and so on, that the last thing you want to do was to politically disenfranchise the south. 